Hi, folks, and welcome back once again to Meaningful Money. I'm here in、uh, the City of London, and、uh, this is the offices of Seven Investment Management, who you know, of course, because they're down there in the bottom right of the screen because they've been sponsoring me now for、uh, nearly 200 episodes and more than two years. With me is Justin Eckert Stewart, one of the directors of Seven IM, who has been here before. You're very welcome, Justin. My pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you once again in advance for your time. Now, what I thought we'd do this time, and this will probably be broken up into two or three episodes, because I know attention spans are very short online, so、uh, I won't make it too difficult for you. But Justin has, when he's been down with us,、uh, speaking to our clients in Cornwall, has done a kind of a round the world tour. The financial markets are intrinsically linked. You know, even though we're an island here in the UK, there's a whole bigger world out there, and what's going on around the world affects very clearly and very directly. Your own finances. So, Justin has a unique take on how that all works, and an incredible ability to explain it, such that you and I can understand it. So, I thought what I'd do is ask Justin to do his round the world tour for us. So, let's start at home, Justin,、yep. if we may, really. What's the the current hot topics? What's、uh, what's in the news right now, and what does it mean? Well, the key issue at the moment, and of course, this is going to develop into next year. Are you seeing really seeing green shoots, or is it advanced mould? <laughs> uh, you may remember years back. Some of us may remember Lord Lamont, and he was one during the last、uh, Tory administration when he was talking about green shoots of recovery, and nothing ever happened. It was advanced mould. <laughs> actually, this time we can start seeing recovery, and of course, actually, the statistics we had out showing that what the recession was like showed that actually, well, it wasn't really a double dip. It wasn't a treble dip, but it wasn't good. No. Basically, we have to put, take a longer picture on it. We had ten years of boom, so therefore we have ten years of lean. We're halfway through the lean; there's another five years to go. That doesn't mean it's bad. That means it starts recovering, trying to get back to where we were. So, the better position is: yes, we've been through a bad time. Yes, we're starting to recover. It's not going to be a boom. It's not going to be brilliant. We can see a slow slope of improvement, and that's an encouraging sign. We probably don't want a boom, do we? Because、mm-hmm. it's always followed by、yeah. an inevitable. Yes,、Bust. there will be busts. There will be、uh, no. It's a cycle. It always is. Question is, how long does the cycle run, and how high do you go? What is interesting is actually they're equal on either side. What you find, the higher you go, the lower you fall on the、mm. other side. So be wary. Where what happens next? Well, the good news is, of course, actually you're beginning to see some confidence coming back. Confidence coming back in t- certainly in terms of smaller companies, which has always been there, but it's always been a matter of. Sh- Please don't tell anybody, but we're doing okay. <laughs>、yeah, uh, it's confidence actually that we haven't been getting from the politicians because they're behaving like children as they always do in their schoolboy rooms, known as the Houses of Parliament.、Mm. That's the bit I find frustrating: is that so few of them really understand the economy and really have the depth of knowledge of experience, because most of them have never been in business in the first place. No, it's worrying, isn't it? Do you think it, it seems to me? And please correct me if I'm being oversimplistic here, but it seems to me obviously austerity was. The、um, strategy,、uh, which is obviously necessary if we were spending more than we earn, that needs to be corrected. That's true at any level, from people's individual finances all the way up to uh, uh, national finances. But there seems to be a move away from just pure austerity towards trying to encourage some growth. It, is, is that? True. Is it enough? It, is that the right strategy?、Uh, yes, it's true, but no, it's not enough.、Okay. Just as we're running our personal finances, if our personal finances are a mess, of course we cut back on expenditure. But we don't stop earning money. We've got to encourage the earning money bit as well. Same as the country has to do. So yes, quite right. We have need to be living within our means. But you don't just grow an economy just by cutting back. You need to look at the growth. Now, why is that important? Well, it's amazing what happens quite quickly. Once you start getting income and growth going, because when you've got growth, you've got expenditure. If you've got expenditure, that means we're spending money. People are making a profit on what's going on every time someone spends some money, and the government takes a, t- a little bit of tax off it as well, a bit of VAT, and so actually the momentum starts building up. That's exactly what's happened in America, and already we've seen a quite a significant pull down in the ratio of their GDP to,、uh, to their deficit,、okay. and so that's a significant change. It hasn't really happened here yet, but it's starting to happen. It, it seemed to me, again, as a、uh, much more of a, a, a layman, <laughs> that the American strategy was to spend their way out of it, and I never really was aware of much talk of austerity in America. Is that true, or have I missed that? No, we haven't. But what's happened is the the American political system failed. That, by what I mean, it's、yeah. it, you, you've got the president, and then you've actually got, got the Congress, and the Congress is divided into two. You've got the Senate, which is dominated by the Democrats, and then you've got the House of Representatives, dominated by the Republicans. 
and some fairly strange Republicans at that, mm-hmm. someone. And of course, this lot in the House of Representatives are only elected for two years, so therefore only have a, you know, a one year attention span. So <laughs> after that, they're trying to get re elected. So this lot can't agree on anything. The Democrats want to make sure that the, the Obamacare and all those social programs go ahead, and the Republicans saying, no, we've got to live within our means. Actually, of course, the compromise is somewhere in the middle, but they're not compromising. The saving grace of the American political system is if they can't agree anything, they fall into something known as a sequester. And the sequester is, right, well, bang your heads together. If you're not behaving yourselves, therefore, we'll start shutting the government down. And so what's happened is the automatic sequester has started doing the cuts for them. So there are no, there's no government austerity. All those discretionary spending on uh, medical research, on uh, government research, on defence research, on national parks, and it starts getting worse and worse and worse as people actually just find themselves, the government starts shutting down. Eventually, therefore, these two will come to a fudge. But in the meantime, the cuts are, are taking place. So you are seeing growth. Um, the growth is about 2%. The sequester is probably about 2%. So, therefore, the American economy is probably growing at something close to 4%, which may be a little bit hot. Almost sounds healthy, right. Well, (laughs) and so action is being taken there. So what we need to see, the next stage is, can they reach an agreement, a fudge, on the debt and the deficit? They will. They'll get there eventually. Usually the 11th hour. It'll be the 11th hour. And there'll be a lovely great phrase about, we're going to have a glide path of management of debt and deficit over the next 15 years. It'll last four years, and then they'll forget about it. And Obama will be able to bask in the legend that what his second term, leaving a legacy of a growing economy. Uh, That's probably what will happen. But the Americans are really lucky. They've gone fracking mad at the moment. <laughs> no. The fact that Canada has sunk by six feet is of no relevance to the Americans at all. They've got cheap fuel. Yeah. A combination of that, rising employment, corporate results, not bad. We've just been going through the next quarter seasons of, of results, and so far, we're not too bad at all. You've also got a, a terrible word. They keep on abusing our language. They've invented another one, reshoring. <laughs> it used to have offshore, which mm-hmm. turned into a verb of offshoring, and now it's reshoring, bringing manufacturing back. Mm-hmm. So, man, particularly from China. So they find themselves in quite a lucky position. Then the final tenet of what's happened in America, which is seeing the recovery, is the primary driver of the US economy, which is about 64, 65% of the economy, which includes their pensions, their, their health care, their income and expenditure. It's Joe Schmo. It's mm-hmm. the consumer. The consumer is more confident. Why? Because the housing market started to pick up. It was disastrous. They had a crash. We haven't had a crash in the United Kingdom, apart from in Ulster. I know one or two bits in Cornwall have been suffering a bit, but nonetheless, not on the scale of the Americans have had. So that's picked up. As that picks up, people get more confidence and they go and spend. There's been something, just coming very back, I say quickly to the UK, there's been some figures recently. I was extremely sceptical of housing market figures anyway, mm. they, uh, particularly recently because the volumes which they're based on, they might see, say that the average house price is going up, but actually there's only four houses been sold in that period or something. You know, so I've always been a bit uh, sceptical about that. But we have a real... Um, sort of fixation with house ownership, don't we? And uh, the values of our property uh, is such a massive factor in our sense of uh, financial well-being. Yes. Is that um, healthy? No, it, it, it's a bit of a, it, a bit of a, it is a worry, this. And particularly in the last budget, I was very concerned by the Chancellor announcing this, effectively the guarantees for people's mortgages. Mm. That's dangerous. Really is, we could find yourself subsidising mortgages and yeah. values. Um, no, so what we do need to do is find more realistic values. We are, at the moment, are sitting on a housing market which certain areas are looking awfully hot, mm. London especially. Other areas cool down as you go further away. But we need to get away from this fixation. And this is one of the areas the government hasn't really done, which is actually make sure there is more housing availability, greater housing stock, but not just for purchase, but also for rental as well. Mm got a shortage of housing. We have not been building enough houses for the past 15 years. Mm. So we need to... take some catching up, isn't it? It is going to. Okay. Sorry, I was going to skip back across the Atlantic because when we look at the numbers, particularly the debt numbers, because obviously the American economy is massive, you know, we're talking trillions. Yep. I mean, I always feel vaguely worried about that, but should I be, or is it because of the fact that... Because America is unique, obviously, in that it's the world's reserve currency. Is that what is the saving grace in this all. I, I was giving a talk the other day to uh, a, at a conference of debt collectors. That was a cracking talk, uh, lecture. Um, and I put up a slide which actually had the American debt on it and deficit. And the noughts are just, just go on and on and on. Mm. There's only one way to understand American debt. Take off eight noughts. Mm. Then you get down to a, a number. And then you start to actually realising what it is. And they quite rightly identified that America's bust. Mm. Yeah, by any normal means, it's bust. But it's a country. 
It, so long as it can finance itself, by which I mean people buy its debt, you said it's the reserve currency, what's the choice? The euro? I don't think so. <laughs> Sterling? <laughs> no, come to that in a minute. Uh, Sterling's only 4% of global reserves. The Chinese currency, the yuan? No, it's not properly tradable. So it has to be the dollar. Yeah. So therefore, America can still finance itself for the time being. But in the longer term, it is going to have to make sure that it gets its finances in order. And therefore, it will mean there will have to be further cuts in due course. But don't worry, what they will do in the meantime is, remember Obama's catchphrase, which is, yes, we can. Now add to that, kick the can further down the road. <laughs> that's what they'll do. <laughs> Excellent. OK, so that's the UK and America. Mm -hmm. Next time we'll come back and we'll cover Europe uh, and some other parts of the world, too. Look forward to it.